How's it going everyone? Nathan, Manly ZOI Garage, and today I'm going to show you what to look for when buying a BMW E90. Okay, so this video is going to go for E90, which is a four-door car, E92, which is a two-door car, E91, which is the wagon, and E93, which is the convertible. These were from 2006, depends on which model, 2007, up to 2013. This video is going to be helpful in helping you guys pick a car out, especially from a dealer or a non-BMW enthusiast. Let's just put it like that. Let's start off with the paint. Look at the paint. How does the paint look? Is the paint all scratched up? That's going to tell you a lot about how the car is maintained. This car has some tiny scratches. It is a car that was in the city, so you have to spec that a little bit. Uh, there is a little peeling on here, but nothing to do with the owner. Just has little, little wear and tear on it. Um, look at the tires. Are the tires all different brands? Are they all the same brand? In this case, they're all the same brand. It means they replace everything at once. Not necessarily bad if it has two different kinds of tires on it, but that means somebody was on a budget when they did it. The next thing you look at on the outside is the front tires. The front tires, the front wheel I should say, uh, you're going to be able to inspect the control arms and ball joints from outside the car without having to even jack it up. You can take your hand and you can roll back, back towards the inner fender wheel. You can take your foot, you stick your foot on it, roll it back. If you see any play when you roll it back, it's probably about due for control arms. Now if you do it yourself, they're about 100 to 150 bucks for the whole set. Not that hard to do overall. Um, another thing too is be sure to inspect your windshield. The windshield can be somewhat costly on these if it's cracked or chipped really bad. All the 90s you have to inspect is going to have, just like every other BMW, the trim is going to be a little bit dry rotted on top. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it on the outside. Now we're going to go into the inside. First thing on the inside take a look at it is this all scratched up is the seat bolster all ruined this one is in very good shape now look at everything else is the car physically clean I'm not talking about little tiny crumbs or something like that is it trashed this particular one the door panels are really nice it does have a piece of tape over the back window because the shop messed that up we'll get into that to a different one uh, video of fixing that go on the inside be sure to look at the mileage. Look at the steering wheel. Is the steering wheel all jacked up and all messed up? Is the check engine light on? If the check engine light is on, you take a scanner and scan it and see what the problem is. That can tell the engine timing could be wrong, could have just a whole various ton of problems. Like anything else, make sure everything inside is operable operable make sure the windows work make sure the sunroof works it's not that big of a deal if it don't most people don't use the sunroof but it's something you like to know before you purchase it make sure all the leds on the dash and on the radio are all operational and they're not all broken up and that's pretty much it on the inside um i guess the biggest thing here would be check the carpet this one has oil and filter we're getting ready to do that change check the carpet uh, just feel the carpet. Does the carpet feel wet? Either in the back or the front. That could be a sunroof drain problem. Yes, these do have that problem. Somebody could have had the door panel off and not put the door insulating foam back on correctly. There's many things that could be. Now, you know on this one we're getting ready to do the valve cover gasket so the cowling's out. You're going to look for a few things up here. First of all, check for oil leaks. Is the oil seeping down here? This one there is a little bit. Look under the oil filter housing. Make sure the gasket that is not leaking. Those like the brake bolts. Look at all the intake manifold bolts. Are any of the intake manifold bolts broken? Is there oil filter eventually on top of the car like this one? If so, that's not good. <laughs> so. Check all that stuff out. Look under the cylinder head with the flashlight on the side of the block. See if there's oil dripping down. That could be telltale signs of broken head bolts. These cars have aluminum head bolts. They like to break the head bolts. 
Look for oil leaking from the valve cover. Look for cracks in the valve cover. That's about a $150 fix if you get to buy a new one of those. Next thing, look at the coolant. Open the lid. Does the coolant look good? Is it the BMW blue coolant? Is it just standard green coolant? Either one is fine. Has somebody mixed in orange with it? Does it look like mud? Those are all questions. If you have an oil filter wrench, bring them with you. Unscrew the oil filter. Look at the filter. Is there a bunch of junk stuck in it? How does the oil look? Is there water mixed with the oil? Is there not? Does the oil smell like gas? There is no dipstick on these. You have to check the oil level inside the car on the display. If the oil smells like gas, it's probably been there for a while. Ask the people they know nothing about it. See if there's service records. Has this been service, service at a shop? Was it a legitimate shop? It probably doesn't matter. They probably messed it up anyway. <laughs> Just to be totally honest with you. Go through and look. Is stuff misplaced like this? Are clamps missing? Is there bolts missing? Is there stuff just kind of laying loose in general? Those are all things to worry about. Look at your radiator hoses. Can you see white, heavy white residue under the hose? Has it been dripping? Does the belt have oil residue? This one does not. Does the belt have coolant on it? Check out the hoses coming from the head, going down to the water pump. You seen in the last video, this one has a rag stuck there to catch a little bit of oil while we had it running. Check the hoses coming from the expansion tank. Squeeze them. Do they feel soft and rotten? If you're really good, you can reach under the car. I could barely see the thermostat right there. Go down here and check the hoses under there. Squeeze the hoses going to the water pump. Has the water pump been replaced? If it's getting around 100,000 miles, the water pump has not been replaced, beware. That's an expensive fix. If you could do it yourself, it's about 150 bucks. If you have to pay a shop, six, seven, I don't even know, thousand dollars probably for water pump replacement. Going back to the head bolts. If it has a broken head bolt, that's an expensive and complicated fix. It's about a hundred dollars to do it yourself. It's probably two thousand to seven thousand dollars to have a shop do it. These cars are very inexpensive to fix, very inexpensive to buy parts for if you could work on it yourself. Once you start having to pay somebody to do it, you're in deep, deep trouble. The next biggest thing, if the car is all-wheel drive, has the transfer case been checked? Does it have the right fluid in the transfer case? You take ATF in the transfer case. The next biggest thing, the transmission. Has the transmission ever been serviced? I like to change these transmission fluid about every 50,000 miles, maybe 40,000 miles, depends on what kind of driving you're doing with it. Uh, also remember the transmission pan has a filter installed in it. You cannot take it apart. You gotta buy a whole new pan. That used to be really expensive. Now they're about 30 to 40 bucks off eBay. If you gotta pay a shop, they're not gonna buy the parts off eBay. That transmission fluid filter change and everything's gonna cost you probably six, 700 plus. So, Get in the car, does the car shift right? Does the car sound right? Are the lifters loud like this one is? That's not probably too big of a worry. There's treatments for that. If the car is not shifting right, it could need transmission solenoid. They could be getting stopped up from not changing the fluid. There is literally a thousand things going on with it. You can check in the OBC cluster the state of the brakes. If somebody's reset the brakes, you know, if you could take the wheel off before you buy it, look at the brakes. If it has an upgraded brake kit, the Brembo's, those are a little more expensive to repair, not much. Um, you know, can you do a brake job by yourself? Those are all questions you have to ask yourself. So that's all guys, I apologize. There's a big thunderstorm coming up. You can hear the thunder in the camera. Hopefully it didn't disrupt it too much. That's all for the, the E90, E91, E92, E93 cars. They really are easy cars to maintain. Also be careful of the N54 and N55 turbo engines. Watch for turbo rattle, wastegate rattle. They could be a lot more expensive, a lot more difficult to deal with. That is it. I feel like I'm rambling on. I haven't even covered a quarter of the problems. Hopefully you guys like this video. Hopefully you enjoy it. Uh, be sure to share, subscribe, leave a comment, tell me what you think. Thanks for watching.